Well, good morning. Good morning. Let's get this thing started. Oh, man, y'all look beautiful once again. I tell y'all that all the time, right? Just say, today I look beautiful. Say, it. I am a child of God. And I have the victory. So get your clip on the next one. And I'm going to learn today how to be such an overcomer that the enemy will have to flee. And that's what we're going to preach about today. And I am excited, man. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I, I want to honor uh, some women in my life. Of course, my mom. She is the finest mother ever. She, there's never been a time, even when I was a hood rat, that she never slept with me. I mean, it's straight up. You can ask anybody that has been with me for 25 years. My mom never gave up hope on me, ever. Amen. And I called her last night, and I said, I just wanted to tell you how much. Godly mothers don't know what to do to change life. Tell them, stay strong. And my mother-in-law, you know everybody their mother-in-law jokes, right? Now, not with me. She was an answer to prayer. And uh, it was something that just the Lord showed me, I'm just going to give you what you ask of me. You ask, you ask not because you ask not. I said, I want to bomb mother-in-law. And she loves me, and I love her. And then, of course, I got Christina. And she takes care of my daughter, and she is a good mama. And isn't she a good mama in the church, though? Yeah. Yeah. Let's give all the mamas a hand. And I want to honor, I want to honor you, uh, mothers that are here today, too. And I want to read you a scripture real quick before I get started. Can I do that? Yeah. And in Proverbs 31, 28 through 31, it says, Her children rise up and call her blessed. Thank you, Jesus. And her husband does also. And he praises her. And many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Yeah. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to stay solid for your children. And I know that the Lord's going to bless you. Amen. It's going to move in their lives. You just stay solid and hold fast. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for this service. We thank you for these wonderful people. We thank you for your presence. What a sweet presence of the Lord this morning. You came. And I know you're here, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for victory. We thank you, Lord, that as we leave, that our hearts are filled with the Word of God, that our hearts are full, that we can become even more stronger overcomers in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Check it out. The weapon of worship. The weapon of worship. And you're like, what does that mean? Well, I'm fixing to teach you. This is a weapon that you probably have not been taking out of the scabbard like you should. Do you get my drift? Yes. Because it's hard to worship sometimes. Isn't it hard to worship sometimes when you're going through it? I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, I've been through it the past couple months and the weeks, and it's getting better, thank you, Jesus. But there's some times when you just got to lay all that aside, all the hurt. I heard you worshiping today. You keep worshiping like that. You keep letting loose. Let the Holy Spirit fill you up. Because that's the because the Bible says straight up in His presence is fullness of joy. I speak joy into your life by the mighty name of Jesus today. And I speak healing in your family, heal hearts, and I speak body to it this morning. And His presence is fullness of joy. His joy is my strength. And when you worship like that. Then you're picking up the weapon. And then the enemy's like, oh, man, they done, they, he done pulled it out now. Because now, when, remember I talked, I, I, I preached about it last week, how David showed up to fight Goliath with a slingshot, but he didn't come with the sword. But guess what? When he was done with the battle, he left with a sword. But now, you got a sword now. But you got a sword. And I'm going to tell you how you have to unsheath that thing today. You gotta, you gotta knock the dust off that weapon, and we're gonna, we're gonna get with it today. So last week we spoke on the breakthroughs in our lives as believers. If you did not catch that last week, can somebody? Was that a good message? Yeah. yeah. It ain't because I preached it, because the Lord gave it to me, man. It was called battle tested. So if you didn't watch that, go watch that because it's gonna coincide with this message. And battle tested is me. You have to be battle tested to grow in faith. It's just that part of it. You're like, Pastor, that don't make any sense. Well, all I know is all the people in the Bible had to go through it, too. Yeah. I mean, 
You, and, but then I was talking about the dove. When the dove goes and he's and he's and he fills seeds in his throat and his crop and he fills the seeds with uh, uh, his throat all day when he's out there gathering seeds and stuff. And then you see him on the side of the road and guess what they're doing? They're eating little rocks and hard pieces of the concrete and grit. And that's called grit, and the grit grinds up the seeds. Y'all already have seeds stored up that you have. You just got to go through a little grit sometimes to see the breakthrough. Amen. And so now I'm going to show you how to get the breakthrough today, though. And it says that at times we may not see it. Pastor, you, you, you don't know how it is for me. No, sister and brother, you don't know how it is for me sometimes, too. Everybody goes through stuff. What do you think I intercede and pray for you nonstop for? Because I know that we're all in the spirit. I know y'all are going through it. So I'm all, all the nights of the all hours of the night sometimes making sure that I'm trying to cover you as a leader. Because God called me to do that. But you have to learn to do that. But then the Lord said, okay, intercession's good. I want you to start worshiping over them. I said, What? Well, how does how do you do that? What does the Bible say? He sings over you. I said, well, what does that mean? Well, if he's singing over you, then you start singing over there. I said, thank you, Jesus. You know why? Because weapon, the weapon of worship is what we're going to talk about today. You see, you got to go through some grit, and sometimes you got to go through a little bit of it, but the breakthrough's come. And I'm going to show you how to get it today. Well, how about worshiping when you don't feel like it? Well, here's week two. We can just get you some. Every one of the heroes in the Bible were worshipers who had a lifestyle built around the word of God. Did you, did you hear me? The praise and worship of God, sacrifice, obedience, humility, and a reverence and a fear of God. And guess what else they did? They had a regular prayer and communion with God daily, often multiple times a day. You see, y'all got to come with me. I'm teaching a little bit. Are you doing that? Make sure. Make sure you're doing all of that. Because you want to see big things happen? You want to see seeds parted in your life? Yeah. Then you do what is applied to the people that in the Bible. That's the examples the Lord gave us. And it was at these vital points of connection that kept them strong in the worst times of their lives. And it is no different today. That's why I'm preaching. If you are in a battle season, if you're under heavy assault from the enemy, if the enemy's putting pressure on you, you see, worship is a spiritual weapon that will not only strengthen you from within, but it'll drive the enemy away. That's right. Amen. Amen. Man, this is already good. I'm going to probably get fired up like I did last week. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Ephesians 6 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Quit trying to do it on your own. You're, you're, you're carrying a load that you can't carry. You were not designed to carry that. The yoke is supposed to be put on him because he said, my yoke is light. Yeah. Come to me, all that are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Yeah. Verse number 11, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of the darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. You've got to put on the armor. You've got to, you've got to unleash the weapons sometimes. And that's what we're going to preach about. Even if the situation you're stuck in is affecting everything in the natural, quit looking with natural eyes all the time because you're going to stay in that same place. You're going to stay in that same defeat in dark place if you look at everything in the flesh. If you're not moving in the spirit, if you're not looking what the word of God is promising in your life, then you're not doing what you need to do. And as much as you need natural defenses when you go into warfare, you need spiritual weapons and defenses as well. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. You see, many in the Bible as told clear in the word of God. Never listen. This is this might be the, the 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 most. This this is what I want you to take home today, right here. Listen closely. Listen. You don't have time to run home and grab your weapon. When that bear comes out, when that lion comes out, when that enemy attacks you and he's right in your face, you don't have time to go home and grab your weapon. See, that's the problem. We've been leaving the weapons and we ain't even been picking them up because we've been, hey, we've left the weapon of worship 
and it's just been sitting there with dust on it, like a lot of my bottles, like a lot of y'all's bottles in the living room. And so I hope you caught that, because the enemy can appear at any moment, because he says he goes around trying to sift you, he may devour you, right? So don't leave that weapon of worship just laying there because it's just sitting there and it's not of any use. So if I had a gun and I came into, uh, I gave, I, or if I had a knife, right, and I came into a gunfight, that wouldn't be a good thing. The guy has an AR-15. I got a knife. What, what, what am I going to do? Right? Quit, quit leaving the weapons at home. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. You see, they carry their weapons on them. And being strong in the Lord is the same principle. When the enemy attacks, and he will, you must be ready to fight and defend at all times. Yes. You hear a bad report? No, 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 no. In the mighty name of Jesus, he said, Amen. by his stripes, I'm healed. Amen. And you start worshiping, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for my healing. I thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. I know. And just start, street, uh, start singing scripture if you have to. Amen. That's what I do all the time. Thank you, Jesus. I'll be just being, man, I'm just getting with Jesus in the morning. Do you know that Smith Wigglesworth, I was talking to Eric about this uh, this week. Do you know what he did? You know what he did every morning when he got up? He worshiped the Lord and danced for 10 minutes. Right. You get out of bed, you start worshiping the Lord and dancing in front of the Lord and singing to the Lord for 10 minutes, guarantee that enemy will flee. Right. Now you see it, but you're like, oh, I, I can't do that. Okay, well then keep being defeated then. Well, my pride won't allow me to do that. Okay, well stay where you at. All I can do is just preach what he told me to preach, brothers and sisters. The reality, the enemy's trials and tribulations that come against you in life may be there because of something that we might have done. I get it. Or because of something the enemy is trying to do in your life because this world is full of sin. You understand? But regardless... Because the enemy will come like a flood at times. The Lord is there to fight for you and with you. Amen. Isaiah spoke a prophetic word of the Lord about the Redeemer of Zion, Jesus Christ, saying this, Isaiah 59, 19. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, listen, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Right. What does a standard mean? That means he's going he's gonna, to he, 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 he come with his own truth. He's going to come with a protection, a barrier around you. The blood of Jesus is lined around you. But that's the standard. The Lord will come against the enemy with you. You just got to learn to worship him while you're in the flood. Staying connected to the Spirit of God will be what keeps your head above the water. It means spending time, listen, in his presence, in worship, strengthening your faith groups through his word, and communi uh, communicating with him daily in prayer. I hope you got that. Maybe I should cover that real quick again. In his presence in worship, strengthening your faith groups through the word of God and in communication with him throughout the day. Jude says to pray without ceasing. Well, Pastor, what does that mean? That means you don't have to sit there and pray in the spirit for 24 hours. I mean, you might, you might have a major breakthrough if you did that. I know I've had to do that sometimes when I fast and stuff. But my point is, he means you want to, you want to stay in the presence of the Lord throughout the day. You, you want to stay in communion. You want to work, keep worshiping the Lord throughout the day. And then that way, guess what? You don't have a gap for the enemy to come through then. Somebody say amen. amen. That's why he said that. The floods will come and go, but they don't have to destroy your life because you're anchored on the solid rock. Amen. You are anchored on the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ. You see, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will show himself to be your solid rock, and he will provide the higher ground upon which to stand, and then you can walk forward. Point number one, the joy of the Lord was their strength. Here we go. In Psalm 63, you know, when David was trapped in the wilderness of Judah and he was being pursued by King Saul, King Saul was trying to kill him, like <laughs> nonstop. As he fled for his life and he hid, he wrote these words in Psalm 63, 6. This is what the psalmist said. This is what David said. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. Verse 7. For you have been my help, and here we go. In the shadow of your wings, I sing for joy. He learned. All I gotta just, all I gotta do is meditate on him in his presence, right? 
That's what he said. And then I start singing to the Lord, and then he'll fight my battles and keep me protected. Man, Man that's good. And you know, I love this. If you go back to that scripture, which you don't have to, Eli, and in the shadow of your wings. I'll tell you, my little hen turkey had babies again this year. She had 13 of them. So she had, last year she had, uh, I think, 11 or 9. This year she had 13. And she brings them into the yard when they hatch. And so last year on Facebook, it was the exact same day they hatched this year, which was last week. So I come around the corner, and it's raining, and I see this little black thing, and it's like this. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, hold up. That, I'm like, I believe it's me now. Because <laughs> I'm kind of creepy out there, and it's like, I'm sitting there, what is that? And I, I couldn't tell what it is, and I'm in the woods hunting all the time, and I couldn't really tell what it was because it was raining, and it looked super creepy. And you know what it was? She went like this, and all those babies followed her. I was like, man, thank you, Jesus. I couldn't get my phone out fast enough. I got it on video. Some of y'all seen it on my social media this week. And I, I videotaped about seven seconds of them, and I counted 13 of them. And she was going, and here they come. Here they come. What was she doing? It was raining. The water was trying to get them. I just preached about he he says he'll rise in, out of the flood onto the solid rock and he'd cover you with his wings. Yes. And the Lord said, That's what I want you to preach this week. I said, Okay, that's beautiful. Yeah. I love baby turkeys and I'm super down with that. <laughs> but she did look creepy, I'm just saying. It was weird, bro. <laughs> you see, you gotta push past your flesh sometimes because somebody I know that hurts. You must offer yourself as the living sacrifice sometimes. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? Because it's the secret of victory in the spirit. You see, worship is always the right spot. You know why worship is always the right response? Because you're coming to the Lord with thanks and gratitude. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you, Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me to green pastures. He nods me down by still waters. He restores my soul. Amen. You've got to start trusting in him to lead you to the places. He's your shepherd. He covers you with his wings. Sing to him and tell him that, and then the devil has to flee. Start praising him, thanking him, being grateful. There's some days when I get up, man, thank you, Jesus, for everything you're doing in my life. I thank you for all those beautiful people that come to Hill Country Life Church. Right, I'm right. so grateful for them. I speak life into them. I speak the mighty name of Jesus into them. I ask you that no weapon form against them shall prosper. And you cover them with their blood. And the enemy cannot come sneak in like a wolf. And I bind the saints. And I just can't start praising. I get all fired up. And then I start singing like children's songs. Amen. Like, I learned, like I learned in the, in the nursery when I was young. He just brings back these old songs to me. And I'm just like, man, I just get so excited. And I go back to my roots and I remember, you know what? Them little kids used to sing every day in there and they'd be so happy. The Lord said, come in there like a child. Yep. Start praising him. Quit being so prideful. The old prideful fact. <laughs> <laughs> Psalms 50, 23 says, He who offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me. And to him who orders his way aright, I shall show the salvation of God. When you worship and thank him continually, you are honoring him. Do you think he ain't going to honor you? He will. He sings over you, so sing over him. Listen close. Worship becomes a weapon of war against the enemy when you step away from who you are and what you're going through, and then you step into the presence of God. When you quit looking at yourself, when you quit having a pity party, when you quit whining, when you quit being in that depressed state, when you quit being so anxious, you say, Jesus, I'm giving that all to you, and I'm going to worship you today because you're going to bring me through and get me out of the flood. Right? Amen. Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of your Lord is your strength. Psalm 16, 11 says that in his presence is fullness of joy. Who caught some joy today during praise and worship? Yeah. Was that heavy on you? Yeah. You, you might have weak, but then you felt like, man, the Lord is right here. Yeah. He's amongst us. Yeah. He's next to me. He walks with me, and he talks with me. Right. Every morning. 
I started doing this one. Psalm 22, 3 says, The Lord's presence dwells within the presence of his people. Read it. You want the presence of the Lord? You want that anointing upon your life? Start praising the Lord. Start praising him. Start clapping. You start rebuking the devil every morning and start praising Jesus. You ain't even got to rebuke the enemy. Don't even worry about sweating him. When you start worshiping and praising the Lord, now you're unleashing the weapon. Y'all like this? Yeah. Yep. Is this something that's going to help you? Yeah. See, when you do that, you become battle tested in each victory over each victory. Watch this, 2 Chronicles 20, 22. When they began singing and praising, here we go again. I hope you read that. When they began singing and praising, the Lord set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, so they were routed. You know what routed means? They were stomped. They were defeated. They were annihilated. And why? How did God fight that battle for them? They were singing and praising to the Lord. How the walls of Jericho come down. Somebody will walk away with some victory out of here today. I'm telling you that right now. You see, worship makes the enemies flee. And it brings down strongholds. Oh, that's some good. I'm, I'm super positive right now. I'm getting hot. I feel like I think I'm 45 and going through a hot flash. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> what do they do? They praise the goodness of God and the evil. Uh, they praise the goodness of God amid the evils of the world. Listen here. Now, here we go. The Apostle Paul and Silas worship the Lord even as they experience the worst of what the world could throw at them. They sat in prison. I will tell you right now, I've been to those places, and I've had bars around me and stuff, and I wore the little jumpsuit. It's not a fun place to be. I was having a hard time when I went to jail. I didn't like it. You can't do nothing. It's not fun. And you just, you can't kick it with me. I mean, it's just a horrible place to be. But Paul and Silas, they were thrown in a dungeon of a jail. Like, I'm talking about nasty. Like, dead people in there still chained up. I'm talking about rats. Roaches and rats. I mean, you're talking about a bad uh, dungeon of a jail they were in. And check it out, Acts 16, 25. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. Here we go. And singing hymns in the praise of God. And the prisoners were listening to them. i got to stop right here for a second. You already know where I'm fixing to go with this. You see, there are people found that are watching how you live for the Lord, and they want to see the joy, <coughs> if you truly have the joy or not. Because when they see that, then the chain is going to be broken. Yeah. Yeah. When you praise, then the hope of Jesus Christ annihilates the enemy. Yes. Just right. Man. 26. And suddenly there came a great earthquake. What? So that the foundations of the prison house were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everybody's chains were unfastened. Lord Amen. broke the chains because of praise and worship. Amen. What were they worshiping the Lord for when things were so bad, Pastor? Anything and everything. I don't know if you caught that. If you feel like you lost your song today, and that you don't no longer have a reason to worship Sunday. Just get back to the basics. You hear me? Yeah. Pastor, uh, giving thanks is so hard, much less worshiping right now. It's just too hard for me. I'm going through the middle of it. You no, know, you're going through a pity party. I'm not, I'm not making fun of hard times. I know. Trust me. I'm, I'm, I've dealt with nasty situations the past two weeks. Bad times. But I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there going, you know, at some point you got to break through. At some point, if you go the morning and breathing and everything, I get it, and let the Lord work through that. But the depression and staying in a state where you cannot move and the enemy has you bound and surrounded, that's what I'm talking about. you got to get a breakthrough, and what <laughs> is your weapon? That's right. When you least feel like worshiping, that is the most powerful time to praise and worship. Yeah. 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 Amen. Because you're bringing him a true sacrifice of praise then. You're sacrificing your little feelings in your flesh, and you're bringing him a true sacrifice of praise because you're worshiping when you don't feel like worshiping. Yeah. Yeah. And that is when the walls will start crumbling down, brothers and sisters. And that's when you see the prisoners will be set free. Mm -hmm. 
You see, change start to break then when you unleash this weapon. Zephaniah 3.17, the Lord your God is in your midst. A victorious warrior. Can somebody say amen? amen. The Lord ain't lost the battle yet. Do you understand me? He will exalt over you with joy. Here we go. He will be quiet in his love. And he will sing or rejoice over you with shouts of joy. Why does he do that? Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding and praying for you. And then he also sings for you because when he sings over you, the enemy must flee. Man. You see, the Lord sings over you. Why wouldn't he sing to him and over your family and over that circumstance? Start praising the Lord. That's all you got to do. Jesus does this as intercession for each of us, and we should take a close look, but we ought to probably follow suit with that. You, you, you might just have to get ignorant. If you get one drift. You might, your kids and your wife might look at you like you are the craziest fool that ever stepped in Texas. But if you get up and say, look, I'm buying this stripe and all this stuff in my house, and you just start praising the Lord, thank you, Jesus. He said, thank hallelujah, I buy the enemy, and you start dancing and singing the Lord, I guarantee you the joy is going to hit, and that circumstance is going to have to fall. Point number three. This is a little different one, but the Lord put this on my heart. They built for themselves an altar of remembrance. Well, how is that worship, Pastor? I'll show you. In the Bible, many after a season of great difficulty was to build an altar. So they went, they went through something that the Lord delivered them from. You know what I'm talking about? And, and they'd say, we're going to build an altar. Okay. Jeremiah 31, 21 says, set up road markers for yourself. Make yourself guideposts. Consider well the highway, the road by which you live. Mm -hmm. You have a testimony of the goodness of God. See, what he did for you is the testimony of the goodness of God that he's fought the battles for you already. You hear me now? Don't you ever forget. Don't you ever forget where you came from. That you are not an old raw dog sinner anymore. You are a redeemed, anointed child of God. Amen. But don't ever forget where you come from because when people do that, they, they lose that, that, that reverence and then there's not a whole lot of worship left in their heart. I'm grateful. I, I, you see these scars right here? That was from a blade. And I was laying on my porch almost dead. I cut my wrist. Do you think that I give a rip about now these ho -to, uh, tattoos of hope? And a scripture of my wife, if I got those stars, I could put these on in remembrance of what Jesus did for me. My tattoos are this for me. They are markers to let me never forget of the goodness of the Lord and the times where he saved me. He brought me a jewel when I put this on my ring finger. When I finished Baptist University, he did this for me. And then I have Galatians 2.20. I've been crucified with Christ. Yeah. That reminds me I'll never have to go back. I'm not saying go get tattooed. <laughs> My mama liked to kill me. I guess. <laughs> but at least I didn't get Snoopy or like the Confederate flag or something. You know, I tell you all that. Like, at least I got stuff that I can say. Our brain hey, in a heart. Jesus did this for us. Huh? Our brain in a heart yeah. with emotions on it. And I'm crucified Our brain in a heart with emotions on it. <laughs> y'all pay five dollars and go out and y'all want to see the gun show. <laughs> Always remember those victories. And for me, this this helps me to do that. You get my drift? Yeah. Don't be so religious. It's okay. Oh, gosh. And when things are at their worst, your testimony will be the lyric of the songs of gratitude that you sing to the Lord. Sing to him with your full heart. Try it this week. Yeah. Who's gonna try that this week? Just, just make sure everybody's out the first time so you won't be all prideful and stuff. You know, the dogs are going to be like, because oh. I see and they all start barking at me. So, Psalms 41. Here we go. Trying to wrap this thing up. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined to me and he heard my cry. He brought me out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay. 
and he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. And here we go. Look, he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God, and many will see in fear and will trust in the Lord. You want to see people get changed? They start watching you worship like y'all did this morning. You get people coming into this church, y'all worship like you did. You're going to see change broken off of people. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll show you. After a year long flood, Noah built an altar in the worship uh, to worship the Lord. Think about that for a minute. That was a big thing he went through. I mean, that was that was a scary. Do thing, right? You know how many years he had into that? Of course he's gonna build an altar. That's in Genesis 8, 12. And after a terrible battle with uh, Amalek where Aaron and Hur held up uh, Moses' hands in the day of battle, Moses built an altar because they won the battle. Listen to me. Listen to me closely right here. When you lift your hands and you keep them up, and you may have to have somebody help you keep them up, when you start worshiping the Lord and hands get higher, the battle is won. After David sinned and God had punished the people for what David did, David repented and built an altar too in 2 Samuel. So sometimes you've got to understand you have to rely on the grace and mercy of Christ sometimes and don't ever forget it. You mess up, fess up, repent, mm -hmm. but don't forget that He gave you that grace. Don't take grace for granted. Somebody say amen. Mm -hmm. See, you will have a song in the nights or the dark seasons and a new song for each night you experience. But what about the altar again, Pastor? Well, that is for your remembrance. Just like we looked at, took the time to build an altar uh, to the Lord in order to worship and praise Him. You built an altar so you can worship and praise, and it's a sacrifice to the Lord. Are you seeing what I'm preaching now? Someday the altar you built in your memory of what God is doing for you today, listen, will be your point of origin to guide you through the next storm. I may say that again because I might have said that too fast. Someday the altar you built in your memory of what God is doing for you today will be your point of origin to guide you through the next storm, and then it will be your testimony to guide someone else. Yeah. That's a form of worship. Because you never forget. You never forget. And when you don't, when, you, when, you, when he brings those times of remembrance back to you and says, look, you already won that victory. Remember what I did for you? I can do it again. And then you start praising and worship. And I'm in the hand of the That's pretty good. That's the best I can describe it. Everybody get that? Yep. Okay. And in closing, I'll say it again. You see, worship becomes a weapon of war against the enemy when you step away from who you are, who you are, and what you're going through in order to step into the presence of God. It's leaving the flesh. It's leaving the problem. It's leaving what the enemy is telling you. And it's stepping into the fullness of God. And then the joy hits. Praise and worship is the weapon. It's the same perspective that carried the examples in the Word of God for people to get through to each victory. You see, praise and worship are supernatural acts of power to force yourself past the flesh and into the Spirit. Sometimes you got to do that. Sometimes you got to force yourself out of that little pity party. And say, I'm going to worship you today, Jesus. I'm going to praise and honor you today. I'm going to spend time in your presence. And I expect you. And please give me the joy today. It will be your greatest sacrifice. And I guarantee the Lord won't forget it. He won't. You see, remember last week? I'm going to show you something. Remember last week how I ended with Abraham? Genesis 22, 9. Then they came to the place in which God had told them. And Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood. And he bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. You see, right at the moment when he was fixing to, 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 to slay his son on that altar, the <coughs> angel said, stop. And then all of a sudden he looked to the right and there was a ram caught in the thicket. So the Lord said, I saw your faith. I saw what you were fixing to do because you were fixing to slay your only begotten son. And then what happened? He said, stop, spare the boy, I'll provide for you. But I will honor your faith. Now listen, we've discussed that. You see, faith was answered at that very moment for Abraham. Abraham was spared by his faith. God thus provided the ram instead. Then his faith saw a miraculous breakthrough of seeds that he had planted. The breakthrough came through his life after he put that faith. But here we go. 
Then, this is what I want you to pay attention to this week. Then he worshipped them. <laughs> he worshipped the Lord. And the name of the place was called God Will Provide. Start worshiping and living your life as a sacrifice to worship him. He'll always come through and provide for you when you do that. Amen. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Did you see that? You see, many forget what the Lord has done for them. Don't you ever forget. Continually thank him with a song of thankfulness and stay in his sweet presence. Do you know that you don't have to come to church on Sunday? When Christina's up here singing and everybody hears and has a corporate anointing, do you know that you can do that throughout the week? Don't think you got a church to come to church to do that. Do it on your own, and then watch your life change. <laughs> Continually thank Him with a song of thankfulness, and then stay in His presence. And then guess what? You give no room for the enemy to attack. Worship Him for what He has done, and by faith for what He will do. Start singing these promises. Now I'm going to leave you with this to help you. Psalm forty-one, eleven. By this I know that you are pleased with me. Because my enemy does not shout in triumph over me. Verse 12, as for me, you uphold me in my integrity and you set me in your presence forever. That's a good one to sing right there. Because you give no room for the enemy if you sing that throughout the week. Satan cannot defeat you without your permission. That's right. That's right. He can't. That's right. You've just been giving him permission. Break the change, get the breakthrough, and most of the time, it's going to be praise and worship that does it for you. Because what that does, it allows you to go into the presence of the Lord, and then he can take you into further intercession, or into the spirit, or wherever he wants to take you. But you've got to start praising him first. It may be a mighty battle that you're going through, I understand. But if you persist in the spirit and you don't give up, you will win because the Lord of heaven's army fight alongside you. Heaven's armies will fight for you. Isaiah 8, 13, here we go. It is the Lord of hosts whom you shall, uh, should regard as holy, and he shall be your fear, and he shall be your dread. You, should, you just start singing this daily and tell the devil where he can get off. If you just say, Lord, hallelujah, you're so holy. You are my strong tower. You are. You will take me and, 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 and make me have wings of an eagle where I will not faint and I will run. And you start praising that and you can get excited and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. And you just start pumping. I said, thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. You're my comforter, my helper. On him I do declare. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, you do that every morning. You watch what happens. The enemy's got to go. The, the walls will tumble. And, the, and, and, the, and nothing can touch you. Man, I'm super hot right now. <laughs> Y'all got a song out of me this morning, baby. Uh, I got a legal example, right? I'm getting the crazy worship. I am super fat right now. Y'all might be faster than I get jet. Look at all the joy in this room. Do you see what the Lord does? Do, do you see that what I just did and all that joy just hit? <laughs> Pay attention. Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord with thanksgiving and a grateful heart through it all. And you will find the strength to persevere because victory will come. Amen. Pick up and use this weapon, my people. Yes. See, you have a battle cry. It is praise. Your battle cry is praise. Yeah. And giving thanks to God in all circumstances will be one of the greatest emotional, mental, and spiritual challenges you'll ever face. But study the examples I've shown today, and it will encourage your spirit. And remember, the battle always belongs to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm telling you this week to stir up your faith and find a new song in your heart. Unleash that weapon of warfare and watch God fight your battles. And it's time to release the praise in your life. I'll end with this scripture, Psalms 149.4. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the afflicted ones with salvation. Thank you, Lord, for that. Let the goodness ones exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. 
When you are even still down, when you're at the end of the day where it's dark, when you went through it, when you're hurting, you still sing for joy on that bed before you lay your head down at night. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. And guess what? Here we go. And a two-edged sword in their hand. I just proved it right there. I just proved what I preached. When you praise in the dark nights and you start praising the Lord and say, thank you, Jesus, I don't care what I'm going through. You're going to bring me through. You unleash the sword and the weapon is unleashed and the enemy's going to be defeated. What? There it is. The weapon of worship will move mountains. Yes. Amen. If you have faith the size of a mountain, you can move mountains. I wish that weapon I bind the enemy up, and it is the faith that will take you to the next level. A new faith will hit your life. Do you hear what I'm preaching today? You can have the victory when you leave here today. I'm telling you that. And some of y'all badly need it, including myself. Worship him this week. Praise uh, him. Get up out of your bed like Smith Wigglesworth and get crunk. <laughs> I love the joy in the house today. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Y'all gonna walk away with a new perspective. And I pray that the Lord fills your hearts with joy. I'm going to pray for you right now. And then we're going to do an altar call. You know we always do that. Father, I thank you for these beautiful hearts. I thank you for the word of God today. I thank you for this fresh revelation in our life this morning, Lord. I know that I got victory personally. And I know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I say, Lord, that you give a fullness of joy in every person's life here today. The ones that are watching online, I speak a fresh faith. I say if they're in the flood, Father, that you yank them up out of their mighty pit and you set them on a solid rock. And when they get on that rock, they will shout for joy in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you that for everything you've done for each and every one of us. I thank that you have given us salvation. I think you have filled us with the Holy Spirit and that power. And I thank you, Lord, that you love me enough to save my life. And I'm up here showing people what you can do in their lives. And I'm grateful for that today, Father. I'll never forget. I'm grateful for all, all the things that you've blessed us with. I'm so, I'm so grateful for all these wonderful mamas this morning. I ask you to give them the strength, Father, that they go out and they dance in front of you, Lord. I ask you to put a new song in their heart today, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Keep your heads bowed. We always do an altar call. You see, Jesus came to reverse the outcome of what we deserve. He came to save the sinner. That includes every one of us. And who this morning would like to have a fresh outlook of his goodness in their life? The first step is to accept him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. This new abundant life is waiting for you in Christ. His goodness and arms are wide open for you this morning because he loves you that dear. He loves there's nothing that's ever separated the love of Christ from you. Nothing that separated the love of Christ from you. Everybody say this word with me while you keep your heads bowed. But if anybody wants to accept Christ here in this house today, please raise your hand. Everybody's good. It's just family. It's just us. Man, I got crazy in the dance and sang. So I got all people raising hands except you this morning. Because it'll change your life and you'll be a new creation. The old things will be gone and new things are coming. And if you're online and you need to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, y'all repeat this prayer after me. Y'all know how we do it. Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. And I'm in need of you. And I'm in need of you. I know that you died on the cross. I know that you died on the cross. For me. And, and rose on the third day. And rose on the third day. For me. For me. I would like to experience your mercy. I'd like to experience your mercy. And grace in my life. And grace in my life. I ask you today, Jesus. I ask you today, Jesus. To come into my heart. To come into my heart. And change. And change me. Save me. Save me. Make me new. Make me new. To forgive me of my sins. To forgive me of my sins. And wash and cleanse me. And wash and cleanse me. Fill me with the power. Fill me with the power. Of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for loving me. I thank you for loving me. Give me new hope in Jesus. Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand.